Hello everyone, today we are going to be doing some really quick tips and tricks how to sketch people. So I sketch people loosely, I sketch people uh, with a bit of colour or I sketch them as a negative space. But fundamentally I love sketching people, I don't get overworked by it and I'd love to just pass on some of these tips um, to yourself. So here are four simple strategies to think about uh, when we're sketching our people in our urban scenes. And here is a video, a quick video, about how to add people into urban sketches and we're going to cover some key points. Number one, how literally how do you draw the people? Number two, how do we focus on perspective, horizon line, getting people the right size? Number three, do we have to do them before or after the rest of our line work? Does it matter? And number four, how do we make them interesting? Thinking about tone and colour. So let's start with how to draw people. Now, I have covered this before in a couple of other videos. Feel free to check those out. But here's a little refresher on my favourite ways to just adding add people into a scene. So the simplest way in urban sketching, they're not the focus, they are just a part of the scene, is to think of them as simple shapes. So people are often just a circle, upside down triangle, well it was triangle I suppose, an upside down triangle. And that right there, that is already a person. You can add accoutrements, you can add bits to them, you can add a hand, you could even give that hand a book or extend that book into a walking stick. There's lots of things you can do, you can add simple things like hats even, you just, once you've got those basic shapes, suddenly there's a lot that can come alive but they are really simple shapes. Another simple way of doing them is keeping a sort of flowing, continuous line feel, which if you watch my videos you'll know I love doing. And that can simply be just, again, shapes, but we're really just kind of really, really, really simplifying. We're keeping that flowing feel, we're moving around the lines. Perhaps you're only drawing half of a person, so you sort of get that feel of them moving by leaving half of them empty. You can be a little bit more focused if you want. Perhaps if someone's more at the front of a scene, you might sort of gradually build things up, in which case I like to start the hair. That kind of sets the scene. And then you could just build along sort of the collar, just get those kind of features in, get the arms in, get the, the waist in. And then gradually you can just build up key landmarks and by keeping things loose and flowing and moving around, before you know it, you've got a person. And there you go. Now, the, 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 one of the tips and tricks about drawing people is um, drawing faces can often make things a lot harder. And also, in the context of drawing a person but focusing on an urban scene, it's a bit unnatural to use the same dark line to draw all the features of the face that you're also drawing massive things like buildings and windows with. So leaving an empty face, or perhaps just a, a suggestion of a nose or an eye, or a suggestion of a key feature, is more effective than trying to draw the whole person. Anyway, moving on, how do we do perspective? How do we think about perspective and the horizon line with humans? Well, the horizon line is the sort of line which is at your eye level. So it's the line where everything, all the vanishing points, if you've got a street, all the vanishing points of that street will be meeting at that horizon line. And why is it also important? It's because your people's heads will also be at that horizon line. So it doesn't matter how far back they are, if the street is flat, every person will have their head on that line. Now there's obvious exceptions. So if someone's really tall, if they're really far away, well, their head will be above that line they're really short and far away, their head will be below that line. But it's going to be there or thereabouts. So a tall person really close will have their head similar to the tall person far away. And their feet are what place them within the image. So where their feet are is what places their position in the image. Where their head is and their, their general scale is what gives them their... Um, their, well, their perspective, their, their size, how, how big they are, um, and makes them look like a human rather than some oddly proportioned thing. A key way of measuring that, because doing perspective lines for buildings is quite easy, so key way of measuring how tall should someone be, 
is by just looking at where are your sort of key features in your buildings. And if this is the top of a, a sort of, uh, let's say it's a, a cafe, say, so you've got the door here, well, you know that the headline should be level just below with the door, for example. And you can keep that going all the way back, so you can measure where the people's heads are. So we've done how to draw people, a couple of simple ways. We've done perspective and horizon line. So then we can think about, do we have to do it before or after the line work? So it, it feels very tempting, doesn't it, to draw a house. Got a little house here. And we want a person there. So there's the door. But the person is here. So we're just going to sort of leave the door out. And then maybe they overlap here. So we'll just leave bits out of the house. And absolutely fine. That is a perfectly valid way of drawing it. We can then add our person in. We can give them all sorts of details. It's very clear. Uh, maybe they've got a, a little bag and they've just been just been out shopping, walking to their door, and great, all done. We can even sort of block in that door and pull that person apart from the image even more. Very, very valid way of doing it. It takes a bit more thought, a bit more planning, and if someone is walking around, if people are moving, if you're urban sketching at a scene where you can't just expect people to stand like a statue for you, it's very hard to do that. So what's the other way? Well, Let's draw our same house. We'll do it in a sort of more loose urban sketching style. We'll draw all our lines. We'll even draw some bushes in. Maybe there's a little street running this way as well, and we can just sort of keep this going. And we can draw all of these lines in, no problem. And now we get to the end and we think, well, we've got our loose scene, but it would be really nice to add some people to, to give it that busyness. Well, you know what? It's actually fine. What happens if we add our people on top? Can add loads of people. You can add dogs. People can be all the way back here. Oh, made that one a bit short, so let's just bring them up. Well, let's do it the other style I talked about as well, doing sort of continuous line sketches of people. We could even draw someone sort of really close, zooming into this image. They're just sort of standing in front of us. And you see, they, they blend in with the line work. There's absolutely no problems doing it either way. This is great from a reference photo, a really considered image. We want it really clean, really illustrative. I love doing it this way, where I, I don't really know until the end, do I want my people in the scene, or am I just going to have a bit of fun and let things flow? And then I get to the end and I think, yeah, let's let's add a load of people. Or it's a bit, the, the thing I want to capture is how busy it is. And having these lines going through people and people being pulled out really just captures that busyness. So I, for me, it adds. But... Make up your own mind, but certainly experiment. Doing your line work carefully, leaving gaps for people versus just letting the people flow over the background line work. And then the last bit that I wanted to talk about is tone color. But how can you make people interesting? How do you make them alive and real? So we can use all of these little sketches we've done just to explore that. So number one, most important for me, bit of tone is at their feet. And what do I mean? I mean a shadow. At the moment, look, this chappy is just floating. All these people are sort of floating. These ones are floating. But what happens if we give him a shadow? He's on the ground. So suddenly he's on the ground. All these people can just be suddenly on the ground, happily on the ground. It adds even more if you have a sort of line in the background as well, because now you have a, a ground and you have a above the ground. Um, but this is the most important bit for me, just grounding people. And it, it, it works all the way along here. So all these people suddenly become more real if we just give them a little bit of tone. Now we can do the same thing, of course, with watercolour. So if I just take a simple bit of um, tonal watercolour and add that in in a few places, just watch those people suddenly exist in the space instead of somehow floating around. What else is sort of important when we think about about making them interesting, adding tone? Well, um, it could be the people want tone. So, for example, let's take our, our chaps here. We could do some hatching. We could just do some really simple hatching. Just like in buildings, you get a bit of shadow under each layer. So you get some shadow under the belt, in between the legs, in between the arms. And we know the light source is coming down here, so this arm will be in shadow. And you see how even just that simple bit of shading, creating some contrast, 
playing with the quality of our line work as well. So you see how I'm just thickening some of these lines. Suddenly there's a lot more interest in shape. And that works for these reductionist people as well. So just by adding some tone there, this really simple line suddenly becomes far more of a human. And you can see that being great in a little sketch. And again, if we just demonstrate a little bit of watercolour, but let's be silly, let's say like, you know, this person's tone is going to be orange. Well, that's also fine. And it could be really loose. It doesn't have to be super neat or anything like that. You just have people being whatever colour you like. Bit of orange, bit of, bit of turquoise for this chappy. You see, just a little bit of tone really brings people to life. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a little bit of sort of orange for the hair, a little bit of blue for the top. It can just be something to bring them to life. And what's the opposite of that? Well, it's bringing the rest of the scene to life. So let's take this little complex scene and let's say we still got the light coming down here. So let's get our shadow going on the building and then all of this is going to be in shadow. But what we can do is we can pull our people out. So suddenly they exist as these negative spaces. And doesn't that just make them pop? Um, and we can we can accentuate that a little bit by just adding a little bit of sketching, hatching around these ones, even though we're seeing the lights there. But just by doing that, suddenly they're popping out. And then we could use these examples again, and we could just go, well, why don't we make them even more interesting? Let's just pop blobs of colour on their heads, for example, or little splashes under their feet or colour the whole of them in. So let's take a, a little bit of a fallow blue here and we could just, again, just colour this whole person in. And then to contrast with, you know, they've got a dog. Silly to make the dog the same colour. Although you can do what you want, of course. So let's make the dog a slightly different colour. And then this person in the front, let's, uh, let's make her different as well. So she can be yellow. And suddenly, loose colours, little splashes and splashes, these people are being brought brought alive, brought to the front, even though we've got all these lines behind, they're still just suddenly, boom, right there with us. We can continue the same idea here. I love just adding little blobs for heads, for example, just tiny blobs of colour for the heads. It can be a really nice way to pull people out. As an example, in some of my scenes, and again the colour so we've got the blobs for colour but the colour doesn't have to exclusively be there so we could extend the concept of tone and colourful tone as well to the rest of this image so we can just have our lovely blue sky and it can come around these people and it can even wash over these people. There's no reason why you have to totally separate them out. You can do a sort of blended approach where you've got interesting colours and tones flowing over everything. And then just separating out in, in different ways. So well worth experimenting with colour, tone, shape and having a bit of fun. So there you go. There is my how to with a few examples, a couple of... Um, preview examples too of how to sketch people. We covered literally how I draw them. We covered perspective, the horizon line, and we covered uh, before or after line work. How do you, how neat do you have to be? And of course, a little bit of tone and colour. How do you make them interesting? So thank you very much for watching.